Hello everybody, I'm William TSR, and today I learned that I apparently own D&D. This whole lawsuit thing is, frankly, it's stupid, but it is a very complicated kind of stupid. TSR Games is crowdfunding a lawsuit against Wizards of the Coast for, well, it could be a lot, or it could be next to nothing. It really depends on how the case goes. The type of case they've filed is called a declaratory judgment of ownership. From what I understand, being that I do not come from a legal background and you should not take this as proper coverage of the case, from what I understand, that means that TSR has created kind of a laundry list of stuff that they think they probably own. And the court is going to decide which of those things they actually own and then begin legal proceedings against Wizards of the Coast for control of those properties. So that's the basic rundown of what's going on, but now the question is, who is TSR? Why do they think they own a bunch of D&D related stuff? And why is this case so funny? Before we get into this, I'm just going to remind you that uh, this is not really a news channel. This is more of like an opinion piece, and I'm providing a summary of what's going on so that you can operate from the same page. However, I am operating off of the same news source as you are, none of this is original stuff from me, and if you want the exact details of what's going on, there are a lot of places you can look. I'm gonna have links down below to the news sources I'm working off of. Disclaimers out of the way. Now to understand this lawsuit, we're gonna need to rewind a few... well, decades, actually. The year is 1973. Gary Gygax and Dave Arneson are selling D&D books out of Gary's basement and it's going very well. But they're well aware that they're not going to be the only TTRPG in town for long, so they need to get published quick. And that is not going well. So they bring in some outside help, and they found their own publisher called TSR. Right around now, you're probably looking at this and going, okay, so that's TSR, that's why they think they own a whole bunch of D&D properties, it's because it's Gary Gygax's publishing company. Okay, I get it. But the story's not done yet. We're gonna get to that. The corporate history of TSR is very complicated. Various people were ousted, different people took over. It's complicated, there was a lot of suing and legal lawsuits, but at the end of the day, TSR was not doing so well in 1994, and by 1996, Wizards of the Coast had purchased the company. Wizards of the Coast at the time was just the inventor of Magic the Gathering, and I think they might have acquired a few other things by then, but they were separate companies up until then. With the release of 3rd edition in the year 2000, Wizards of the Coast stopped using TSR for any form of branding. And soon enough, they allowed their trademark of all the TSR branding stuff to drop. And that is the story of where the original TSR ends. So who exactly is suing Wizards of the Coast now, if the original TSR that created D&D &D has been folded into Wizards of the Coast and merged together to form one company. Well, you know how Wizards let the trademark drop? That kinda meant that other people were free to step in and assume the name TSR. That was kind of all it let them do was assume the name and the branding, and that's just what we've seen happen this year. A trio of capital G gamers have stepped in to form a new and revived TSR. Now, I am, again, not a lawyer, so as far as my understanding of trademark works, they are not the original TSR, they've just used the name. They shouldn't, as far as my understanding of the law works, they shouldn't have any actual claims to old TSR properties they are, for all intents and purposes, a brand new company, I think. Allegedly. In Minecraft is what I mean. Anyway, our friends at TSR seem to disagree with that legal precedent because they are doing their lawsuit to try and get some control again over old TSR properties, despite the fact that they are not the original TSR. Now, this stuff is all new territory for me. I'm not sure what I'm legally allowed to say about lawsuits that are currently active, so I will just say, based off of the history and the foundation of new TSR, 
Do you think they have any claim to ownership over D&D properties? Here's a statement from an actual lawyer about this whole thing. Also, go subscribe to Legal Kimchi on YouTube. He is an actual lawyer. He makes video essays about D&D and gaming, and I've chatted with him a little bit, and he's contemplating putting out a bigger and more thorough, like, proper news coverage thing of this event. So go subscribe to him right away, and if he puts something out, that will be the absolute best source of all information on the TSR case. Now let's move on to the actual people behind the new TSR. But before we get into that, I just want to absolutely remind you, do not harass anyone involved in this. We are not for that. This community does not do that. Instead, if you would like to take out your righteous anger on a set of Muppets, please do so by hitting the like button to this video so that this highly opinionated video can get spread around instead. Now this whole situation, even if it was just standing on its own, is very funny. But it's even funnier once we learn a little bit more about our gamer friends at TSR. The Dream Trio is made up of Justin Lanassa, Stefan Deinhardt, and Ernest Gygax. And yes, Ernest Gygax is Gary Gygax's son. Well, maybe there's some legitimacy to this thing if a Gygax is involved in the project. I would like to remind you that Gary Gygax himself was actually ousted from TSR in all that corporate shenanigans that happened in the 80s. So even if Gary Gygax himself came back from the dead and declared that he is TSR and owns everything that TSR used to, he would not have a case there, let alone his estate. A a allegedly, in Minecraft, in Minecraft. If you are particularly well informed in the TTRPG community, you may have actually already heard of our three sweaty musketeers when they and their company were disavowed and barred from entering Gen Con earlier this year. This was as a result of Gygax sharing his interesting views on the inclusive nature of modern role-playing games. Now, to be completely fair, this is just a little blip from the interview, and Ernest Gygax did go back after and apologize and clarify his statement that he didn't mean to be excluding people from the hobby. I bring this up not to try and paint a good guy, bad guy narrative, but simply to provide a little bit of context as to what's going on when you read this part of the GoFundMe. Essentially, they also want to pursue having Wizards of the Coast remove the content warning about legacy content that warns that the books may contain outdated and harmful prejudices that were common in the past. Is their motive for doing all of this just culture warring? I, I, I can't tell you. You tell me. In Minecraft. Anyway, after the whole Gen Con stuff, the company kind of had a little mini explosion, but it's still around. We don't necessarily know fully what's going on behind the scenes, or who is still associated, or still involved, but we do know that Justin Lanassa was the one who announced this lawsuit on the GoFundMe page. And a reminder, harassing him or anyone else involved in this would leave me profoundly disappointed in you. So I'll see you next week, everybody, when we'll be back to our normal content.